Select the major product of the following reaction sequence. So if we look at what we have, we are starting with an alkyl halide. And we are treating this with magnesium metal. And Et2O is diethyl ether. And that is the solvent. So ethers that are not these cyclic three-membered rings, epoxides that we see in step two are not reactive, so they make very good solvents. So diethyl ether, and that is the solvent in the reaction. So, so what's really doing the work here is the magnesium. And so what happens when you put magnesium metal in with an alkyl or an aryl halide is it actually dissolves and it inserts between the carbon-halogen bond. So the conditions for this first step, what we're doing is we're forming something known as a Grignard reagent. So you are forming a Grignard reagent with this first step. So we're starting with that benzyl bromide, treating it with magnesium metal in diethyl ether solvent. And so that magnesium is inserting between the carbon bromine bond. So we end up with a structure that looks like this. And this is a Grignard reagent. Um, so the halogen is still associated with the magnesium. Uh, magnesium is in the second column on the periodic table. So when it forms an ion, it forms a two plus ion. So it has a negative charge essentially from this carbon atom and a negative charge from the bromine balancing out that two plus charge. And much like alkyl lithium reagents, we can consider this carbon metal bond to be essentially an ionic bond. So this is going to act as though it is a carbon ion. So it's gonna act as though, and so I'm gonna abbreviate the benzene ring as phenyl. Um, so it's gonna act as though we have um, a negative charge on that carbon. I'm just going to erase this quickly. I didn't want to draw that covalent bond. Okay, um, so let me draw the CH2. So it's going to act as though we've got that CH2 with a negative charge and then the magnesium bromide um, as a positive counter ion, right? We said magnesium is plus two. It's still got the bromide next to it. So overall, this complex ion would be plus one. Okay, so this is a really powerful nucleophile and a strong base. Um, so this is a strong nucleophile and a strong base. So like alkyl lithium reagents, this would react with acidic hydrogens or it could react with an electrophilic carbon. And that's what we have when we have an epoxide. Because of the ring strain, both carbon atoms of that epoxide are very electrophilic. So once we have formed this Grignard reagent, so the way it could react with this epoxide is it's going to attack one of the two carbon atoms of the epoxide and break the carbon oxygen bond. And so this is a symmetrical epoxide. We didn't have to think about what side we were attacking. So when we follow these arrows, we have a benzene ring. We have this CH2. That CH2 is forming a bond with this carbon, which has also got two hydrogens. So we have another CH2. Um, we don't have the bond to oxygen because we broke it. That CH2 is attached to another CH2, which is attached to the oxygen because we did not break that carbon-oxygen bond. So I'm going to number these carbon atoms. So I'm going to put number one at my carbon ion and number two where it attacked on the epoxide and then carbon three. So we can see that there's carbon one. We formed a bond to carbon two, which is a CH2, and then carbon three, which is also a CH2, and that's the carbon that still has a bond to oxygen. And so this would be the structure that we formed after that second step. And what we have here is a workup step with aqueous acid. So you'll often see this with either water or H3O+, plus, um, but the role is to protonate the alkoxide. Okay. So this will protonate the alkoxide ion. So if we add in H3O+, plus,
this alkoxide is going to take one of the acidic protons and we'll break the hydrogen oxygen bonds. So this is going to make the alcohol. So we'll have the benzene ring, three carbon atoms, and the alcohol, as we see here in A.